All right, so it's been not quite 24 hours, 18 hours or so. Um, I didn't have to add any more uh, of the of the rejuvenator rejuvenator oil to the to the, the seat. You can see it in the camera; it's still shiny, uh, and so that tells me that you have enough of the product on the on the leather. So now we can start to start to clean it off. So again, I did this at like I want to say three o'clock yesterday. It's I guess it has been 24 hours. It's about three o'clock now on Saturday. And so I've got a new, I'm sure you could probably use the same pad, but a new pad that I just dunked in water. I've got some warm water here in the bucket. And then we've got rejuvenator oil. And then I've got another towel, which I'm gonna throw in the bucket. And then I've got some dry towels. So I've got a wet towel, my slightly damp applicator, and then I've got some dry towels. I've also got a leather brush and I've got the leather attachment, the upholstery attachment on my Nano. So if we, you know, have some of these areas that need to be cleaned, we'll, we'll get to that too. And so to start, um, give the rejuvenator a little shake. So we're going to spray the rejuvenator. I'm sorry, this isn't the rejuvenator. This is the pristine clean. We're going to spray it right on the surface. I'm going to do the base of the seat first. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna start to clean the seat. So I really wanna work this in the surface, put it back in my bucket, bring it out. I don't think you really want this to be super wet. I think you want it to be you know, damp, and don't get, get some decent, or it may make sense to wash these little terry cloth applicators beforehand because they're linting all over the place on me here. These are brand new. This is also something I wonder. Yeah, that's not dirt in there, that's just the the fibers of the of the leather and the way it's designed. So I think the pristine clean, I think the idea is that it helps lift or counteract the, the dirt that's been lifted from the rejuvenator oil. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back with my wet towel. I'm gonna wring it out pretty good, pretty well. Come back over the surface and just get all the remaining junk out of here. Okay, now I'm going to take a dry towel, it's a fresh dry towel, and dry it off. And then we get a nice, clean, matte finish. New looking leather type finish. Wow, awesome. Now, we might still have some 
some oils being released you know over time here the car gets out in the sun and then we'll just use some pristine clean or some, I'm sorry some rejuvenate yeah pristine clean and you just use that to come back over it just clean it up so there's our surface so you can see the difference between shiny and matte work through the upper part so I guess it might be smarter to do the upper part first lesson learned yeah definitely smarter to do the upper part first these are just my green interior towels that I have on the on the website do this one little section at a time lowered seat rail makes it a little harder to deal with this bouncing around you know I find that Doing this leatherique system, you know, it's a lot more time consuming than doing the Leather Master system. So I <clears throat> find that this more to be more of like a restoring type solution versus a Leather Master's kit. I would call more of a just a maintenance type solution. And then you can just use the rejuvenator. I'm so, I keep getting confused. You can use the pristine clean as just a follow, you know, just to, as a you know cleaning tool to clean the the seat occasionally, just to touch it up. Yeah, definitely do the top part first. Like washing your car. I have my dry towel. The biggest difference to this seat in person is this part getting the shine out so it looks like leather. So I think of leather eek as making the leather look like leather. Not shiny, not coated or treated or anything. It just makes the leather look like it's supposed to look. So we did some serious remodeling. This is why my garage is postponed indefinitely. And so I've had all these problems that, you know, just yesterday I'm dealing with a new set of problems. We had our kitchen, we gutted our kitchen, started from scratch. I mean, I guess we didn't bring it down to the studs, but you know, in some areas we did, but 
um, you know, put brick backsplashes in, made it look like there's a brick wall in the in the breakfast nook, the dining nook or whatever. We don't have an actual formal dining room. I'm glad we don't. We would never use. We would never use it. But. Yesterday, so we're just about we're, we're just in the lot final phase like the final little things like the 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 guy is here that you know does all the final touch-up work And then the ceiling starts freaking leaking from the second floor. It has nothing to do with this project I'm like man, what did I freaking get myself into and then I had to get a new pump when we put the new water heater in my hot water hasn't been working. It takes forever for it to get to where it needs to get to. And so my buddy Brian Orr comes to save the day. Turns out the lines in the in the seat in the uh, walls for the AC system, you know, nothing to do with what we installed, but the lines in the walls started leaking. And you know, condensating and dripping enough water to fill a darn garbage can over the course of you know a couple of days it's insane so you know because of the amount of water i assumed it was the um i assumed it was the water line or something it turned out it was the ac so we got that fixed and then brian just came over here short you know like an hour ago we the plumber Put the pump in backwards, so we had to fix that. So that's the you know that's the struggle with our you know being living in this obsessed world that I live in, and that you know it's find a, it's hard to find other people that are obsessed. You know I got a plumber that I relied on because I, I just don't have time to obsess over everything in my life, and I turned it over to him, and you know, literally the, the pump has a flow arrow on it, and we couldn't figure out the arrow is on the very back side, kind of tucked away. We couldn't see it, and so I started doing all kinds of research and learned that the pump is actually directional, which makes sense. I mean, pumps generally have a flow. You know, it flows a certain way. Let's see about this. This probably isn't smart to get this out, but just a couple of little dots of gunk in the seat. It's like some leather spray or something like that in a couple of these holes and just kind of pushing it through. So that'll help treat, you know, some of the cracking and stuff. Gets rid of all the junk. So I do have some the, some wear that's starting here. Looks pretty awesome. There's just one little white spot here I'm trying to I don't know what that is. All right, so here goes the passenger seat. If you didn't watch the video where I put the seat rails on the driver's seat, um, basically what happened is I bought two seat rails thinking I could put a right-hand drive. I don't know why I didn't think about this. It seems so logical now. That I could put the right-hand drive, I thought it was left, right-hand side, left-hand side, but I was wrong can't put the right hand drive seat rail on the right hand side of the US car. So I took the passenger seat out thinking I could put a lower seat rail on that side too. And you can't. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. So since I had the seat out, it was an opportune time to get everything cleaned up. I thought it was smart anyway, you know. Let's get this here while we're at it. So our house is almost done. And what I've done is, you know, I've got all these cars out here in the pole barn that are, you know, you know semi-protected. I mean, there's no, it's lots of shade out here. Um, you know, it's, so it's, not as hot, but you know, you get kind of the, you know, Florida is real 
dirty, you know, there's bugs and dust everywhere. So, you know, and every time the guys come to cut the grass, it, you know, blows all kinds of stuff all over the place. And so the cars just don't stay as clean as I'd like. And it's just, I'm telling you, I mean, it's just not in the cards right now from a time perspective. You know, I could go get a loan and build a garage and, you know, I, and I have, I, I just, it's just not smart. I just write, wrote so many freaking checks to get the interior of the house done. And I knew that was going to happen, that it came in way over what I thought it was going to cost. And so the kitchen, bathroom, house is painted. The exterior is getting repainted here uh, starting this week. Uh, the guys are, the painters are coming out to finish up the, you know, to touch up the interior from all the, you know, construction that went on. So that project will be done here shortly. And then I'm just going to take a break from that kind of project mode and just keep playing with cars and so for the foreseeable future I've decided to I've leased a space so I went out and there's there's a, a place that I've been talking about for a long time and I actually considered you know when I was at my old house you know leasing that space it's called my garage or my village garage and you know it's like a little garage type condo type place which I think is super cool and you know, I really want to have a place there anyway. And what I think might happen is my parents might move down here and we'll, um, I'll have Obsessed Garage sort of headquartered here where we're, where we're packing and shipping right now. You know, my parents live in Pennsylvania, so they're shipping everything for me from there. And so a couple of things, you know, I want that space because it's cool, first off. Secondly, I want it because I'll probably end up having to store a bunch of stuff there. Shirts, hats, detailing stuff, you know, all the, all the stuff where I'm, I'm you know, providing packages, those products. And then what I'm going to do, I'm obviously going to have to clean the TV after this. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep my cars, keep my trailer, keep all that stuff there and just keep like maybe, you know, keep one or two cars here and just cycle them through. So when I, when I wash a car, you know, I'll take it over there and leave it and pick up the other car, drive that, then wash that, you know, and it's right next to my office. And so before, you know, I, I, when I originally thought about doing it, it's pretty far from my, from my office. And when I left Merrill Lynch, um, I mean, you know, I moved, moved to, my office moved to the other side of town. So it's actually pretty convenient for me now that, you know, I can go into the office drop off the S2000, pick up the GT3, drive the GT3 that week, wash the GT3, drive the GT3 over there, drop that off, and you know, repeat. And so that's the plan for the foreseeable future. And the other, the other reason why I want to do that is when I do build the garage, I'm not going to want the cars here anyway. It's going to be a mess. You know, there's going to be construction dirt and dust and these, these are all my justifications for why I want this garage space. And so that's the plan for now, which will certainly postpone the build of the garage. Uh, again, just this, at this point in my life, you know, I'm building two businesses. And you know, I've had this f such fortunate, you know, luck of the draw kind of stumbled upon this, you know, this passion project of sharing what I'm doing in my garage on the weekend, which again, I'd be doing this anyway. Sharing that with you guys, sharing it with the world. And then, you know, people like you are calling me to manage your money and, 
in my, my business that I, you know, I used to have to spend 75% of my existence trying to find clients somehow. And now I spend 0% of my time doing that because people see my, again, I'm not a professional detailer and I'm out here you know, with my seats removed from my car and, and doing this process to it. Um, that, you know, and the guys that are, you know, you guys that are watching this, you know, most of you will do the same thing. And so it's just logical that you'd want a obsessed person watching over your life savings. So, you know, I've got a lot going on there. And I, I you know, I, at some point here in the not too distant future, I'm probably gonna need to upgrade, you know, and, and add some staff, not upgrade, but add staff. And, you know, and, and continue to, to build that, that business while building the, you know, the Obsessed Garage retail business, which has been insane. And then my, you know, again, my parents are going to help me a lot with that. And, you know, I'm going to be hiring them full time here soon, I think. Tell me that isn't the coolest freaking thing in the world to be able to work with your mom and dad. And they, you know, and, and here's the beauty for me. My mom and dad aren't any mom and dads. They're freaking obsessed, <laughs> you know. So right now, as we speak, they're putting together over 100 wand gun and, you know, pressure washing packages because we just got a shipment the other day from, from Mosmatic. So, you know, my dad has tons of experience, you know, plant management experience, inventory control, things like that. And so I think, you know, he's the perfect person to run that. And he's my, you know, my family. So it just works out incredibly well. And, you know, the, so all of us that, you know, are buying this stuff from me, these packages, we all get the benefit of that. It's just great. It's awesome. So awesome. Unexplainably awesome. I think some people on Instagram were freaking out that they thought I shined up my leather or something. <laughs> Come on. You guys should know me better than that. All right, so let's pristine clean the base. So the garage, and I, I really need to make the video to share with you what the thing's going to cost. Again, I think when it's all said and done, um, I think it's going to be about 240000 to do. And it'll end up being, you know, upstairs, downstairs. I think under air, it'll be about 3,000 square feet. Let's see, 16 by 80. 800, no, about 3,500 square feet, 3,600 square feet under air. So, you know, it's going to cost a lot. So cost, time, and enjoyment is going to postpone that. So we'll see how into this you know, little garage condo thing I'm going to build, which again, I intend to become obsessed garage headquarters. I may even start detailing out of there, not me, but you know, having somebody detail out of there and run my shipping operations out of there at some point. But that's going to certainly buy me some time, gives me a place where my cars are covered, protected from mice and rodents and things like that. I'll keep the bubble out here. And so I don't think mice are as big of a problem if the car sits, you know, a day or two. It's if the car sits for, you know, weeks at a time. And now that I have, you know, including Michelle's car, I've got five cars, you know, some cars are gonna sit. It's just inevitable. Just remember this is the seat. It's gonna need to get fixed. This is kind of like the garage. I'm, I'm dialing in the seats here when I'm eventually going to be replacing them. <laughs> Not the seats, but the, the leather. So, and I haven't shared the, 
I haven't shared the interior of the house, the process there. I, I don't know why, it just didn't feel right. All this materialistic crap doesn't mean jack, you know, buying all this stuff really doesn't mean anything. And I, I just, it's a shame, but one was I just didn't want to invest the time in making the videos and worry about trying to ask the people that were, you know, working on the house if they'd be cool with me shooting video and all that stuff. And um, that's part of the reason. The other reason I just didn't want to deal with all of the crap that comes with people naysaying and calling me whatever they want to call me. I just wasn't interested in doing that. So I didn't share the house build process. I will tell you, don't ever do a project as big as I did without a general contractor. <laughs> My wife became, Michelle became the general contractor. Don't do that. Just hire somebody. Because that made it so much worse. Because construction guys, guys building stuff in the trades, they just don't take the care that you or I would in most cases. I'm sure there's some good ones out there, but, and I did have some good ones, some bad ones. It's just, it'd be nice to have somebody else worrying about it, but besides me. And even with the GC, there's no gear, there are no guarantees. So I would think also having, you know, having the leather treated here, and the thing that's occurring to me right now as we're working on this is I think it'd be nice to put like leather vital, you know, to follow up with the leather master stuff on this. How would that do? So anyway, I didn't intend to make a to do a life update here. Especially you new people that are, you know, just came for the S two thousand, you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> so there's the passenger seat. So again. It doesn't look like anything. It just looks like a leather seat. That's what you want. Clean, new looking, untreated, untouched leather. You know, we don't need shiny coatings, all of that junk. I just don't, I don't think that's necessary. If you're not eating cheeseburgers in your car, then, I mean, I guess even if you are, just don't drop your freaking don't drop stuff on the seats. I mean, I go to the gym, jump in the car, sweaty, <laughs> sweaty as can be, and I don't have any issues. It's darn good though, doesn't it? Other than the tears, which I'll, I'll get remedied at some point. All right, so let's go dial in the interior and uh, then get the seats back in. Let's put the top down. Put my insurance card in here. I'm telling you people, if you have an expensive house, Chubb insurance is amazing. I think I insured this thing for 27 grand, cost like 1200 bucks a year. No, 900 bucks, 950 bucks a year. You know, you just agree on the value. I'm gonna clean this up too while I'm here. All right, so let's do a little center console area here. Microfiber towel. The water's starting to look pretty dirty. These multi purpose, these towels are so awesome, so versatile. It lasts forever. Clean towel, clean dry towel, buff this off. Oh man, that looks great.
<clears throat> even though this car's so small, especially when the seats are out and the top's off, the interior is way easier to clean in this than it is in the other, my other cars. Still can't quite tell if this is leather. I guess, yeah, it is. I'm talking about this little section. Again, my water is, and it's still warm, but I, you know, you want it, you don't want it super hot, but you know, it's a good, still got some warmth to it. And I'm, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes into this part of the project. Wow, that looks that really was made a difference. This took the shine off the door handle. That's great. All right, I'm gonna go do the other door panel and we're done. So there's what our bucket looks like after dialing in the entire interior. Got some dirt. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Or the 